Good afternoon guys, Cavs here again. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk today about trail towns, how to get into them, um, and what's there, what what's uh, to be offered out the, in the trail towns. So we're going to cover that today. Um, also, um, I have a lot of other videos on the Arizona Trail, so um, be sure you watch them. If this is information that uh, pertains to you and if it's something you like, hit that like button or subscribe button if you want to see more. We're going to jump right into that, guys. All right, so, uh, it's northbound season, so <clears throat> the first town that you will come into is Patagonia. Now, the last time that I hiked this trail, the new reroute avoiding Pat Patagonia wasn't in place. Um, Patagonia is a super cool town, very cool hippie vibe and I recommend going to it it's only uh, 51.6 miles into your trail that may have changed because of the um, the new reroute but um, it's definitely a cool town to go to and I recommend it um, getting into it before we just walked the road um, and that was the actual Arizona trail now the trail diverts away from Patagonia um, so you would still have to walk the road in order to get in there or you could hitch. Um, so what's in Patagonia? So in Patagonia, there's a new place called Terrasol, which is being uh, put together by a very nice name, lady named Mary Tolina. I could be pronouncing that incorrectly. I apologize, Mary, if that's the case for you. Um, and it is a place where hikers can, you know, uh, stay. There's a lot of other um, facilities offered there. They have bikes so you can ride into town. In town itself, if you're just passing through and you need provisions, there are two stores. One is um, kind of um, a hippie store where it's, if you're vegan or gluten free or anything like that, you could definitely find that stuff there. There is a general convenience store, which is the cheaper of the two, and that has enough stuff to kind of hold you over. Um, if you needed a quick charge up or something like that, there's a little gazebo in the center of town that has plugs in there if you're just passing through or if you're going through there when there's nothing open. Um, there's also a place called Velvet, uh, El Velvet Elvis Pizza, which uh, every time that I've done the, um, the Arizona Trail, they've had a special out there. They find out that there's hikers in town and then they do a cheese pizza special for $8 or something like that. Very good pizza, so definitely check it out. Um, from that same place, you can go to Sonoida. I've never been to Sonoida. I have nothing to say about it. I don't really know how you would get there. It's so early in the trail. I mean, if you're looking for a break, just go to Patagonia. Sonoida is not really worth it. The next town we're going to be talking about is Vail. Vail is a suburb of Tucson. And um, Vail pretty much has everything that you would need. It's kind of a one-stop shop um, for the hiker trash. Your best bet to getting into Vail would be from Gabriel Zimmerman Trailhead, which is at mile 121.7 or 669.1, depending on your direction. Um, you could hitch from there, talk to people at the trailhead and get into town. Um, there is a Safeway. Near that Safeway is pretty much everything else that you would need. Outside that Safeway is a tables and outlets there if you just need to charge um, and to get back on trail. There's tons of fast food stuff um, so you could fill your little heart's desire there. And getting back to the trail I recommend just talking to people at Safeway. I had people come up to me and just ask me like they could tell you're an Arizona trail hiker and ask if you needed a ride back. So very easy, very helpful. Nice town. The next spot would be uh, mile 123.5 if you're going north or 667.2 if you're going southbound. Next place would be Colossal Cave. Um, Colossal Cave is definitely worth going to. Um, it, it really wasn't open um, a lot of the years that I did it, but I've been fortunate to go and visit it when I wasn't doing the Arizona Trail. Um, and I recommend doing it. Um, you should definitely check the hours and um, if you need uh, appointments or reservations or anything like that, um, things are changing all the time. So um, definitely look into that and make sure you're on top of that. Um, at the Colossal Cave, there is 
minimal stuff for resupply, but there is a little frozen margarita bar type thing and some small snacks that could occupy your time in a hot day. The best way to get there is just to walk. It's like 0.6 or 0.3 off trail. The next place we're gonna be talking about is Summer Haven. That is the small little town on Mount Lemon. That's mile 186.9 or 603.7, depending on your direction. Um, so how do you get in there? Well, the, the trail goes right through town. Literally, it's a small town. If you blink, you'll miss it. Uh, so don't blink. Uh, so you're gonna walk into that. Um, what's in there so there's a cookie place um, every time that i've been there the cookie place has been closed so i have nothing to say about it but i've heard from past hikers that it's delicious so if it is open get yourself a cookie make sure you stop by the general store tell them your arizona trail through hiker and they'll give you a free hot chocolate um, there is no accommodation um, in this town at the moment that i am writing this or making this video apparently there is something that's coming into fruition i don't know if it'll actually be open by the time you get there but um places that hikers generally sleep and that's recommended by the sheriff or other police officers is in the usps there's kind of like a 24-hour area where you can access your postal box and in there you can sleep the lights stay on all night there's no charging points um, it's not the most comfortable thing, but if you're in a pinch, it will work. Across the street from that is a 24-hour bathroom. In that little bathroom hallway, there are charging points. That is a very popular bathroom. They tell you not to sleep in there, and uh, I've seen people get kicked out of there. So please obey those rules. It's also a very popular place for truckers, so you'd be waking up all the time for people using the restroom all night long. All right, the next town is Oracle. Um, so there's a couple different ways to get into Oracle. Um, I think Far Out kind of tells you that you should go in via American Flag Trailhead at mile 201.1. Um, that trailhead's in the middle of nowhere. Um, every time that I've walked through there, there's been nobody there. Um, and it's not really a great place to catch a hitch. That road isn't that popular. Um, I don't recommend it. But it comes first it's at mile 201.1 so you know talk to people if people are walking the same direction or you're walking or headed towards that trailhead chat them up see if they are going into oracle or maybe give you a ride now if there is nobody at that that place you're going to keep on walking and you're going to walk to uh the tiger mine trailhead in that direction and you're gonna cross Highway 77, which is at mile 208. From there, you can hitch into Oracle, or at least to the um, the main road for Oracle, then you'll have to divert. Um, in Oracle, there's a Dollar General, um, which has everything that you would need to get a resupply. There is a Circle K if you wanted to drop ship something. There is a Amazon drop box at that Circle K that's right next to the general store. So keep that in mind. There's a great Mexican place called Casa Riviera's Taco Express. Um, that place is delicious. If it's open, hours are kind of different uh, and unique. Um, the Patio Cafe, if you get there for breakfast, highly recommend it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all you need to know for Oracle. Um, it's not the easiest town to get into, but it is a town you will need to get to because of the food carry that you've had or you're going to have. Next town is Kearney. Uh, easily the nicest town on the Arizona Trail. I'm not the first person to say that. I won't be the last person to say that. Um, they're just extremely generous and nice there. Um, so the trail is, mile number is mile 264 or mile number 526.7, depending on your direction. Um, so how do you get into that town? Well, uh, there's a pizza place called Old Time Pizza. And if you call them, they'll pick you up 100%. They've done it every time. They're the nicest people in the world. They have good pizza, not great pizza, but very good pizza, good pitcher deals. Um, definitely recommend going in there and uh, saying hello. They have a big Arizona Trail fly you can sign. 
Um, yeah, very nice people. Uh, another way is uh, you just stand there. <laughs> Uh, like I said, Kearney's a very, very nice town. You're going to walk up to the Gila River. There's going to be a bridge. You cross that bridge, and then you're going to walk up the road, um, and somebody is going to pick you up. Um, it's very easy, so don't stress out about that one at all. But like I said, push come to shove, call Old Time Pizza. All right, so what's in the town? Um, well, Old Time Pizza we just went over. Um, it also has an IGA, which has a deli um, that could specifically make food for people that have um, allergies or if you're vegan or gluten or anything like that they are very catering and will make uh, meals to order or anything like that so definitely get something from there in that same little shopping plaza there is a family dollar which if you're cheap like me is a full resupply um, so definitely uh, go in there if you can't find anything that you're looking at IGA um, Places to stay. So there is a few places in Kearney. This is like one of the towns that is has some place. I think it's the Kearney Inn. Um, and those rooms are as much as about $100 a night. Um, and if you're looking for the cheap way, um, it's $5 to, to, to camp and to shower at the Easy Wash on Tilbury Drive. Um, there's laundry and charging on site, camping, it's not the most beautiful campsite, you're kind of in a parking lot, but it's $5, shower, laundry's there, you have to pay extra for the laundry, but one stop shop. The next town is Superior, mile 301 or mile 489.6. Um, the best way to get in there is to hitch from Highway 60. Um, what is in there? Well, there is a family dollar. Um, the farmer's market that's in there has been closed for quite a while. Um, the save money market really isn't the greatest. And I really just don't overall recommend Superior. Um, like I said, the best way is to get in there Highway 60 Hitch or you call Al Fails or MJ, who are two trail angels. You can find them on the AZTA um, trail angels list. Um, you know, like I said, there's not really a lot of stuff there. I don't know why people want to go there. I'm not pushing you off or telling you not to go there, but if you had to choose friendly town with everything you need versus a town that is doesn't have a whole lot, I think it's a pretty easy decision there. But, you know, it is your hike, so hike your own hike. Do your thing. All right, uh, next place is Roosevelt Marina. Um, Lake Marina it's a marina there's nothing there there's a restaurant there's a little shack um, charging shack a little table some fake grass that you can hang out at and camp at um, charging ports seem to be locked uh, all around the facility and when I was there it was not that friendly now I've talked to quite a few quite a few people recently have said that the that's changed that the the supply there at the store is better than it has been and that you can get a resupply there. I cannot speak on that, so I'm not going to say you can, but people have told me that they have changed their, maybe it's ownership or changed their thought process to Arizona Trail people. The shed when I was there was not working, but someone told me that is in full functioning order now. Um, there is charging points. Um, on the lights on the patio to the restaurant that I would recommend charging at if nothing else is available to you. Um, if there is nothing there, um, if you could hitch uh, down the road to um, Pumpkin Center, um, it's about 13 to 16 miles. There's an IGA and there's a Dollar General there where you can do a full resupply. But uh, that's what I did. But apparently, like I said, things have changed at the marina. So I guess you will find out when you get there. The next town is Payson. So Payson is mile 385 or 405.7, more or less like the middle point of the trail. Um, you know, Payson has a lot of stuff in there. It has, uh, it's a big town. It has uh, Walmart, Safeway, quite, quite amount of stuff. The problem is, is getting there. So at mile 385, you know, you're, you're hitching from Highway 87, which is uh, Sunflower. And when you get there, you're going to see why I'm telling you this. There is nothing there. 
Um, that is a highway that people go very fast on and getting a hitch there, you know, you people say you can hitch into Phoenix from there. Good luck. Um, people say you can hitch to Payson from there. Also, good luck. It's just not an appealing spot to get in anywhere, really. So I don't recommend doing that. If you were happen to be so lucky that you passed a day hiker or some reason on those trails hiking in from either direction, chat them up and get a ride. But that's your best opportunity to get out of that spot. Moving on. Pine slash strawberry, mile 456 or 334. So Pine is where I would recommend if you wanted to go to Payson to do that. Um, it's actually a lot easier to hitch from Pine Trailhead or that highway that's right there um, into Payson. Um, you could also hitch into Pine or Strawberry. You could definitely walk to Pine. Strawberry would be kind of a hike. So we're gonna talk about what's available in Pine. So there's a very nice trail angel called Shannon Trout. Um, she allows hikers to stay at her house. I can't recall the cost of what it is per night. I think that's based on the room that you get, bed or whatnot. There is laundry, she has hiker clothes. Um, she was last year giving rides to, for people to Payson, um, but within uh, Pine, there is a couple small places to buy stuff. There is a general store. Um, you could resupply there. Is it gonna be cheap? No. Uh, is it a full resupply? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but it's it's not the greatest resupply. I'd recommend going into Payson. Payson has a Walmart, Safeway, full stop, one stop shop. Um, yeah, also in Pine, you have uh, that brewery. Um, and that brewery has a hiker box, so uh, check it out. It's one of the few on trail. Um, there's also the Early Bird Cafe for breakfast. Um, the Ponderosa Market, which is your general store thing. Um, the Old Country Inn and the Pinewood Tavern. Those are all places to eat. Um, there is the Pine Cabins, which are like $200 a night, and they come with a $70 cleaning fee in addition to. No thank you. Um, strawberry. So Strawberry has, I've never been there, but Strawberry has the Strawberry Chalet. They do give an AZT discount. Um, there is the pie bar, and then there is the weekender. All that information was given to me from other hikers. I cannot speak on it. I've never been there personally, but a lot of people talk good about those places. So um, that could be an option for you. So the next town uh, that I want to talk about is Mormon Lake. Um, this is mile marker 531 if you're going northbound or mile marker 259 if you're going southbound. Um, there's really not a whole lot there. There is a place to stay. I believe it was $130 a night to stay there. Um, there is a post office which you could send a box. I recommend that you send a box there. Um, and then there's a small little general store. Um, they have a laundry facilities there that you can use. The people are extremely nice. Um, like I said, there's not a whole lot there, but um, some people require food, so it's definitely some place that you could send a box. There is a little pub there. Sometimes it's open, sometimes it's not. Um, and there is no lake there, so don't expect to see water. Flagstaff to urban trail or to not urban trail? That is the question. <laughs> well, uh, Flagstaff is a very big town. It's gonna, it's gonna be your biggest town on the trail and it will have everything. Um, you probably have not stayed in a room as of this moment and if you're a cheap hiker like me, if you're not a cheap hiker like me, then maybe you've shelled out some money and stayed in a room somewhere. But for the most part, you're probably gonna stay in a hotel room. This is gonna be your opportunity to enjoy the town. Um, the cheapest places to stay used to be hostels and some motels and hotels. Um, I believe the hostel now is closed, so that is no longer a thing. Um, the next cheapest place that's gonna come up is U Hotel. It sucks. 
I've stayed there twice. I don't know why I stayed there again because it was the cheapest place and I was the only person in my group. Um, it's still not that cheap. I think it was like a 90 something dollars a night. I'm surprised they don't rent the room by the minute or the hour and I'm surprised there's not vibrating beds. Um, so don't recommend that. The other cheap place is the Motel Motel. Motel L. Um, I definitely recommend that. Um, for food, uh, Martin, uh, M-A-R-T-A-N-N-E is a, a fantastic Mexican breakfast place. Totally recommend going there. And the night, the downtown area has a really nice area that you can go out and walk around, super hip and chill. Um, and uh, so, you know, I would take the urban route. There's a Taco Bell on it. You're going to be going into town. Um, there is a Safeway off of the circular trail. Um, they're relatively the same distances from trail. But the urban trail goes right past all the hotels, goes right past all the restaurants, goes right past everything that you want. Uh, and there's a Taco Bell on trail when you leave the city. So, I say urban trail, but you know, you make the decision. All right, the next place is not a town, but more or less just a, a ski lodge. Snow Bowl, that is just north of Flagstaff. That's at the base of Mount Humphreys. Climb it. If there's no snow up there, or if it's not snowing, if it's not inclement weather, climb that mountain. It is a beautiful, beautiful mountain. There used to be a huge volcano there, and when you get up there, you can see the caldera, and it is super cool um, part of the San Francisco's. Um, there also is a abandoned uh, plane, an F-18 bomber from 1944 on the seventh switchback. If you head north into the Avalanche Scree, you will find it. It's also available on Maps Me and a few other uh, mapping apps offline, so you could find it. Um, at the Snow Bowl, it's open year-round. People take the, uh, the chair up for a better view. Um, at that place, there's a restaurant. There was a food truck. When I was there, it was during COVID. They were not friendly to hikers. Um, that has changed. And um, so you should have a different experience than what I had. But there's charging points, there's bathrooms, there's water fill-ups. And it's just a short distance off trail. If you're going to be doing the Mount Humphrey Summit, um, it's right on trail. The next one is Tusayan. Um, and that's how you pronounce it, FYI. So Tusayan, um, mile 686 or mile 104.5. Um, how do you get into it? You walk. It is one mile off trail. You walk right down the highway and bada bing, bada boom, you are there. Um, what's there? The world's most expensive McDonald's is there. Um, the general store is extremely, extremely pricey. Uh, ironically enough, going to the Grand Canyon at the South Rim is cheaper. So I wouldn't recommend going there. If you fancy the world's most expensive uh, Big Mac, then go ahead and get yourself a Royale with cheese for eight bucks. Mile 690.9, just a few miles down the road, is the South Rim of the Grand Canyon. Or if you're going southbound, it's mile 99.8. Um... The South Rim is great, man. I mean, the Grand Canyon's amazing. Spend some time there. Um, you know, they have a campground for us. It's $6 a person at Mather Campground, so I definitely recommend staying there. It's a campsite. It's 24 and 25. They have bear boxes for us. There's charging points in the bathrooms. There's shower walking distance and laundry walking distance from your campsite. I mean, like 150 feet from your campsite. So definitely check that out at the Grand, at the Grand Canyon south rim village there's a general store a chevy chase bank um and a few other things um, the general store has fantastic selection of food it has uh, make your own six pack of beer relatively exp uh, inexpensive it's probably one of the most affordable um, national park general stores i've ever been to Beer's always affordable at, at national parks i love that um, there's a charging point inside of the general store behind the ice machine. There is Wi-Fi at both the general store and at Chase Bank. I believe the Chase Bank Wi-Fi is better. Um, yeah, so that's the Grand Canyon. There's also the, um, the backcountry office there if you want to get a backcountry permit to go into the canyon and spend a night 
in the canyon. You don't need a permit for walking through the Grand Canyon, but you need, do need a permit to spend the night inside the Grand Canyon. So go to the backcountry office if you're interested in that. All right, at the bottom of the Grand Canyon is this amazing place called the Phantom Ranch. Out of the 7 million people that visit the Grand Canyon every year, only 1% make it to the bottom to the Phantom Ranch. So congratulate yourselves. You are now a one percenter. Um, so what's at the Phantom Ranch? Really nothing. Uh, everything that, that goes there has to be brought down by pack mule. So um, you can you can receive and send mail down there. Um, there is a canteen at the bottom, generally slim pickings. Over the recent years, they've changed their their business strategy only to selling to people that have accommodation at the bottom um, of the Grand Canyon in in a cabin or a hut or something like that. If you're hiking down, the only things that are offered to you are very limited, but apparently that's changing or has changed since the last season that I've done that. But uh, before you used to be able to get just like iced tea and um, lemonade, and I believe it was $6 um, for one of those, and then you get $1 refills from there. If you're really cheeky, you just grab one of those cups out of the trash, wash it out, and you just have $1 iced teas and um lemonades but apparently they've started selling beer down there at a limited selection it's eight dollars a pop um they used to have grand canyon pale ale and it's like the only place you can get it so if that is available get it but don't hold your breath i've hiked down many times expecting to get a beer down there only to find out that they're not selling beer <laughs> The North Rim of the Grand Canyon. This is mile 713.8 or mile 76.9. Um, what is there? So at the campground, which is also $6 a pop, totally recommend staying there. It's probably the best view you're going to have on trail. Um, it is so beautiful at that campsite that they have allotted for us. And it's $6 a night. Um, Right near that campground is a general store. It has a decent selection of stuff depending on when you arrive there. Um, you know, if you are a southbounder, you're going to be going through there at the end of their season and their selection is going to be kind of limited because they're not going to resupply. There's no point. There's less and less people coming, so they're just trying to get through their, their stuff. Um, so they'll offer specials, which is good. They'll offer discounts and stuff like that because they're just trying to get rid of it. But it's not going to be a full resupply, so don't think it is. Um, if you're headed north, there'll be a lot more better options for you when you get there because it's going to be opening time or it isn't even open yet, depending on when you get there. The north rim of the Grand Canyon, on average, opens on the second week of May, but that is completely dependent on, um, on the snow and that snow year. Um, you know, it is a massive lodge on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, and it takes a lot of manpower and man hours to get that thing working and running. So when they say they're going to be open on May 15th or wherever, um, they need a couple weeks prior to that in order to actually get things open. So that general store will be open a couple weeks prior to the rim being open, and also on the other end, it will be open a couple weeks later than when the rim closes because employees need to get stuff too so keep that in mind guys other things that are available at the north rim I and mean, there's a lot of nice hiking trails and stuff like that um, there's charging points in the bathrooms charging points uh, in the general store the nice ladies there will hold your stuff or Bob the camp host if he's still there um, can charge hit your gear in his um, in his RV. Um, by the Rim Village, there is a pizza place and there are showers and laundry sometimes. Every time that I've been there in the last four times that I've done the Arizona Trail, it has not been open. But things are changing, so it could be open. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> All right. Mile 763 or 27.6 is Jacob Lake. This is either the first or the last town on your trail. Um, so you hitch or you walk 89A. It's 2.3 miles or something like that in, into town. Um, it's not really a town. There's a restaurant. There is a hotel. There's a gas station. 
it's basically like a rest stop for weary travelers and tired travelers. Um, there is an Indian fry bread truck. If you never had Indian fry bread, try it out. It is a Navajo specialty. Um, there's a restaurant there with a very small shop of limited supplies. Um, the restaurant has cut me off on alcohol every single time that I've been there after two beers, so keep that in mind. Um, probably better just to buy a six pack if that's your goal because they will cut you off in the restaurant and then the gift shop won't sell you any either. Um, there's really famous cookies there. Uh, I don't know if it's just me. I didn't think the cookies were that good, but everybody talks about them. Maybe it's because most of my trips were southbound that it was the first town and I didn't have that hiker hunger yet, so it wasn't that appealing, but um, everybody raves about it. So if you're going northbound, I guess get yourself a cookie. It's supposed to be pretty good. All right. You've made it to Utah. Congratulations. This is either the beginning or the end for you. Um, if this is, you know, this is the end or this is the beginning, um, it's a really cool town, Kanab, to go to. And um, I recommend getting there. Um, you can get permits for the wave. There's Buckskin Gulch. There is a lot of stuff to see in this area. Don't just leave and go home. If you have time, explore around. Well, how do you get to Kanab? That's a good question. How do you get to Kanab to the trailhead? Also a good question. Um, well, I can provide you with answers to both of those questions. So um, if you're finishing the trail and you've gotten to the state line campground, you're going to go to the campground main road and you're going to make a left into Utah. And you're going to go up that road, which is Wire Pass Road, I believe. And about 1.9 miles up on your left is going to be Wire Pass Trailhead. And that is the trailhead for Buckskin Gulch. That is the trailhead for the wave. That is the trailhead for a lot of really famous things in Vermilion Cliffs. Talk to people there and get yourself a ride back to Big Water, Page, or Kanab. I'd recommend Kanab. Kanab is a cool town. A lot of stuff to do there. Um, vice versa, uh, if you're in Kanab and you're trying to get to the trailhead, you go to the BLM office at 9 a.m. every day. They have the in-person raffle for the wave. And... Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody doesn't win. There's only like a certain limited amount of permits issued per day. So uh, a lot of those people are still going to be going to that area for Buckskin Gulch because it's the longest uh, gulch in the United States of America. So just chat them up and uh, get yourself a ride to the trailhead. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's, uh, that's the Arizona Trail Towns, uh, what's in them, how to get there, and all that info. I really, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this video and... If so, hit that like, uh, slap that subscribe if this is something that has uh, pertained to you and that you may want to see more of. Uh, once again, this is Cavs. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you guys out there. Happy trails, y'all.